Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Dave Callister, and I have the privilege and honor of serving as the city manager of Plymouth. And I want to thank you for being here this morning. We've got uh, some great information for you. Uh, we have a lot of things going on in Plymouth, as you'll hear about. Uh, this is the fourth year in a row that we have ventured out of City Hall to do the state of the city. And we do that intentionally to showcase uh, the businesses in our community because we have a lot of businesses, they do a lot of things, they compete globally, and we wanted to showcase uh, another business this year, and so we're very thankful for Productivity for having us here. And um, we would like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the business, and I want to introduce Kevin Tim from Productivity, he's the Chief Operating Officer. And Kevin is going to tell us a little bit about the business itself. So Kevin, please. Well, good morning. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out here to Productivity today. Also, like to thank the City of Plymouth for allowing us to be able to host this event today. We really appreciate that. Uh, Productivity Incorporated is a machine tool distributor. Uh, we sell large metal cutting equipment uh, to the manufacturing industry. Uh, we have uh, we have offices. Our main office is here in Plymouth, Minnesota. We also have offices in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and Omaha, Nebraska. Here we have about 220 employees, 225 employees, and then we have about 21 in Iowa and 23 in Nebraska. So we've grown since I started back in 88 from 25 to this now, so it's, it's great. Uh, what you're standing in this morning is basically what we added on about 11 years ago. It was a 20,000 square foot addition. Uh, so we worked with the City of Plymouth quite a bit during that, so it's a great, uh, we, we've known the City of Plymouth very well lately. Um, so we have, uh, we've been in business for 50 years, and uh, we just had actually our 50 year anniversary here uh, in uh, December, so that was great for to have everybody from all the offices come here and enjoy that. Um, the, uh, the territory that we usually uh, sell to is, is Minnesota, Western Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, and the Dakotas. Um, we also sell nationally. Uh, we have a couple products. We do uh, tooling which goes inside the machines. Um, we have our own brand names called Redline, and we sell that throughout the United States. Uh, we also have uh, automation. We do a lot of automation. I think everybody probably understands how we need that today. Uh, so we sell the robot, robot that go with a machine and we integrate everything to go take things out of the machine, put it down a conveyor line, etc. So we do a lot of different packages for the automation type industry. Next door, we have uh, two buildings. Uh, we have a uh, used equipment business, so we sell the used machines as well as new machines, and that's one building. I call it our north building. And then to the south of that building, uh, we also have a rotor repair, it's called. So there's certain uh, live tools that are used in a machine that get uh, damaged, and so what we do is we repair those here. We're National Repair Center. So we added that uh, last fall. We just moved into that space over there. So we've got quite a, quite a growing of uh, buildings here um, lately in the last five, ten years, so appreciate it. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming out and uh, looking forward to the mayor's message today. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you for being part of the Plymouth business community. Um, now I wanted to introduce our co-sponsor for this event. Uh, Deb McMillan is the vice president of public policy for the Twin West Chamber. Deb. Good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Deb McMillan. I work on the public policy for the Twin West Chamber of Commerce. I'm delighted to be here on behalf of Twin West, and um, thank you for the opportunity to join the new mayor, Jeff Washi, for his first State of the City address. And thanks to Productivity for opening their doors and welcoming all of us here today. Twin West is a regional chamber of commerce with more than 700 member businesses, representing over 55,000 employees in the Western Twin Cities region, which includes Plymouth. Our members represent a variety of businesses and industries, from internationally renowned corporations to home-based businesses. 
Twin West recently launched Prosper Together, which is our new strategic plan and business model, which leverages additional business investment and our newly formed public-private partnerships with cities and school districts to champion regional growth and prosperity through expanded and innovative programming. And that's a big mouthful, and I'm happy to talk more about that for anybody who's interested. Just call over to our office, and we'll hook you up with the right people. We have a long history of working with our local governments. We recognize the importance of strong cities in creating a healthy business climate, and we appreciate the active involvement and support of our elected officials, officials as well as city staff. So thank you to Mayor Jeff Washi and the City Council and the manager, Dave Callister, for including us this morning. We're grateful for the great partnership between the City of Plymouth and the Twin West Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Deb. Now I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Bala Guntapali to introduce our speaker for the day. Bala. <laughs> Looks like you have a special guest with us today, so how are you doing? Good, good. Good. Thank you. Yeah. You got it. <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Good morning. Jeff Washi began his public service with the city of Plymouth in 2011 when he was appointed to serve the remainder of the unexpired term for the Ward 2 City Council seat. After that term ended, he was elected to the seat in 2012 and re-elected in 2014. Plymouth voters elected him as a mayor in November 2018, as uh, all of us know. While local government service has been an important focus Mayor Washi has a track record of uh, civic engagement beyond City Hall. His interest in transit and transportation has led him to serve on the Transportation Advisory Board of the Metropolitan Council and uh, Suburban Transit Association. He serves on the Vezera School Community Education Advisory Board and, is also, and has also served as the past president of the Vezera High School PTO. He's a past board member of the Minnesota Chiefs of uh, Police Foundation and a president of the Plymouth Rotary Club in which past president of the Plymouth Rotary Club in which he is still active. With a degree in economics from the University of Minnesota, the mayor has worked for nearly three decades in commercial banking. Mayor Washi grew up in Golden Valley and graduated from Armstrong High School. He and his uh, beautiful wife have five children and uh, have lived in Plymouth since uh, 2000. As an avid long distance runner, Washi typically runs two to three marathons a year. Thank you, Bala. <laughs> All right. Ball is the president of our Rotary Club this year, and I'm proud to be introduced by him. I've been a member of the Plymouth Rotary for the last 10 years. In fact, in 2008 um, was the first time I had worked for a company downtown for a long time. In 2008, I actually got a job with a comp local company here, a local bank. They're a competition now, so I won't mention their name. Uh, <laughs> but um, it was the first time I actually worked and lived in the same community. And when I worked back in the, in, I've been in banking my whole life, and when I worked through that, banks have always had a dedication to be serve and get involved in the communities they, they uh, are in. And so when I worked and lived in Plymouth, I wanted to get involved in, in the local community. So I joined the Rotary Club. I knew Judy Johnson, through, who was with Twin West at the time, uh, and she got me to uh, encourage me to apply for uh, a committee that the city has. And so I did that, and in 2009, I got appointed onto uh, the city's transit committee. And so, in fact, in 2009 was the first time I ever attended uh, a state of the city address. And so it's like, a, it's a little kind of like weird 10 years later be actually giving the state of the city address. If you had asked me 10 years ago if I would be given the state of the city, I didn't know anybody in that really on the city 10 years ago, except uh, former council member Judy Johnson. And I still remember 
you know, remember like high school where you all have these cliques? And I always thought like, wow, the city council and the mayor and all that, like the chief, remember Chief Goldstein? Like, that's the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> and after the state of the city, I like m went up and said hi to Judy and, and then she introduced me to the other council members and then Mayor Slavic at the time and the chief was there and I go, wow, these are like real people and they're really nice <laughs> and they're inviting and encouraging and it just kind of like gave me a whole different perspective of, of what the city council was and uh, as Bala said, then ended up so when you volunteer for a city position or a committee, careful where that might lead uh, in terms of that path. Um, I'm happy to be at Productivity, excited to be here. Um, it's an opportunity to present this annual update and I'm proud to say that the state of the city of Plymouth remains strong. In the past, thank you. And in the past few years, we've taken the state of the city, like uh, our city manager has said on the road for the last four years, I think it's a great way to showcase the businesses in our community, as you're gonna see a little bit later in the program. Um, the commercial, industrial, all that piece is an integral part of what we, what we have in this city. Uh, we're featuring productivity. It's a local, privately held business. And I was interested in holding it here because in my job in banking, I work with a lot of companies about this size. And one of the things that always impresses me about companies like productivity is, you look at some of the other corporate or larger corporations, you know, and we visit with them in, in Plymouth here that are located here, and they have the same challenges productivity has. Or any of the other, like, like Greg over at Seacole, or Bruce over at Andrew Tool, you know, they have to, they're worried about tariffs and the tariffs and the implication it can have here. They're worried about supply side management. They're worried about their distribution channels. And other companies just have a lot more resources to work, throw at those problems. And companies the size of productivity, they don't. They just have to innovate, they have to create. And every time you come out and meet with them, I'm just astounded at how, how well they do and how much they're able to innovate. So I got off script a little bit. <laughs> uh, is Helen tilting her head? <laughs> Sorry, that's an inside joke. <laughs> uh, before I go further though, I do want to introduce some of the people that are in the room. First, I want to introduce our city council. Uh, I know if we, our city council could stand so I could point you out, I know council member Carroll is here, council member Davis is here, council member Willis is here. Uh, Councilmember Prom is here. Yes, I see you, Jim. <laughs> uh, we have Chief Goldstein, I know, is here. Our Deputy Chief is here. Uh, Roger is here, right? Our, our Fire Chief, yep, over here. So in all, we have a lot of staff here today, too. So thank you, everyone, for coming. If we have any other officials, uh, I want to point out our new Met Council member, Judy Johnson. We're proud to have her in that role. Judy served for the city of Plymouth, former mayor, former council member for 20 years, over 20 years actually. Um, and if you think about it, in the last two months, we've lost 40 years of experience on the council. So that is a big deal, to lose that much institutional knowledge so quickly. So um, I also want to point out we have uh, our school, what is that, school board members, Andrea Cuny and Cheryl Polson. Uh, and we have the Osseo uh, school board member, uh, now he missed his name. Mike? Ostafi. Ostafi from the Osseo School Board for thank you for coming today. Did I miss anybody else? All right. Thank you for all for coming today. As the new mayor, I'm honored to represent Plymouth. And I'm fortunate that our community has so much good news to share today. People know about Plymouth's quality of life. We're a top tier metro city. We have highly regarded schools and a nationally accredited park and trail system and vibrant neighborhood. The other thing I want to brag about a little bit here is we have an award-recognized volunteer program that's run by Jackie Maz. And we also have an award-winning communications program headed up by Helen LaFave. So we want to always brag about those points. Plymouth is also a great place to work. 
We have a thriving business sector and it's an important part of the health of our community. Businesses add value in terms of jobs they bring to our community, diverse tax base, and an environment of innovation. Plymouth has Minnesota's fourth largest economy. Our economy is larger than Rochester's and Duluth, and other Minneapolis and St. Paul, we're the only metropolitan, we're the only major city that doesn't have a shopping mall. That adds to the GDP. Only Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Bloomington actually have uh, higher gross business sales than Plymouth does. Now this uh, next slide is a little astounding to me because Plymouth is home to more than 2,300 businesses and now we actually have over 60,000 jobs in Plymouth. That is just amazing. Look back in 2012, we just had a little over 53,000. Now we have over 60,000 jobs. Our top industries include is manufacturing. A lot of people don't realize how much manufacturing is actually in Plymouth. Just under 20% of the total Plymouth jobs uh, are into manufacturing. A large portion of Plymouth's manufacturing is related to med device. In fact, a trade group rep representing Minnesota's med tech industry, Medical Alley, uh, tells us that Plymouth has one of the largest concentration of med device manufacturing in the world and has the largest concentration of med tech uh, in the country. So we, are, we come, become a hub for med tech and we're really proud of that. Our communities continue to thrive as a home for health innovation. That includes digital health, medical tech, and biotech companies. A recent study by Medical Alley shows that Plymouth ranks number two in Minnesota for health innovation investment. Ten Plymouth companies raised more than $57 million last year for research and development. Think about that. That's almost $1,000 per job in the city, in the, that of jobs that are in the city. That's a lot of R&D work that's going on in our community. We're proud to have the life-saving work performed by this industry and appreciate the clean, high-paying jobs they bring to our city. And I want to point out, Plymouth is committed to helping businesses in our community. We want to help you find what you need to grow and be assistance any way we can. One of the ways we do that is through our economic development program. I want to point out Danette, can you stand? There, in the back. There, she is standing. <laughs> Danette spearheads those efforts. If you have not met Danette, just please connect with her before you leave today. She's always interested in connecting with our businesses and to better understand their needs and find ways the city might be able to help. An economic development issue that's high on the city council's list of priorities this year is re-looking at the city, uh, city center, Plymouth City Center. We're calling that effort two point, City Center 2.0. As you know, City Center is just located down the road from here uh, on the corner, the, the northeast corner of Highway 55 and Vicksburg Lane. Uh, includes an area, there's a lot of office there, we know there's retail there, Cub is there, um, and the theater is the library, City Hall, the Hilde Center. Well, the, we want to take a look at that and look at what we can do for continued development and redevelopment. And the city center was envisioned over 20 years ago. A lot has changed in the 20 years. Plymouth has changed a lot in the 20 years. What originally was envisioned and what do we think it needs to be envisioned for the next 20 years. So the council will be looking at that. We're going to look at the area's boundaries, land uses, placemaking, beautification, pedestrian safety, and the walkability in that area. In our economic development efforts, we want to help businesses, we want to help connect entrepreneurs with the tools and resources they need to get the businesses off the ground and expand here too. Since the last state of the city, we have enhanced the economic development area of the city website. We've added features and information that make it easier for companies to find financial tools, talent, and the right space. We work with our small and mid-sized businesses and startups through our Open to Business program. Since the program launched in 2016, it's approved business loans totaling more than a million dollars. And those loans leverage more than $15 million in capital. Both large and small businesses are doing well in Plymouth. Last year, Plymouth companies had a strong showing in the Minneapolis-St. Paul Business Journal's list of top companies in the metro area. Here are some of the categories where we found Plymouth businesses. In the med tech, for the 2018's top medical tech companies call Plymouth home, including Smith Medical, Nonin, Incisive Surgical, and 
Interod Medical. Three Plymouth companies are in the ranks of the 50 fastest growing companies in the Twin Cities based on revenue, including Comlink, as you can see, Nimblelink, and MCAT. And last year, a Plymouth company was among the largest venture capital deals made in the Twin Cities. Monteras Medical came in at number five, with a deal totaling more than $26 million. And lastly, Plymouth-based Lennar, Minnesota, was at the top of the list for metro area home builders. Those are just a handful of Plymouth companies featured in the Business Journal's list of top companies. Now let's highlight several businesses that have shown their confidence and commitment to our community by making major investments in Plymouth and moving more jobs here. One of the largest providers of medicines, pharmaceutical supplies and health information technology, McKesson, moved 200 jobs to the Jet 55 Corporate Center on Highway 55 and County Road 6 last year. Then a globally recognized leader in the industrial automation, Banner Engineering, recently completed a new research and development facility on its headquarters on 10th Avenue in Plymouth. Banner currently has 500 employees in the Plymouth facility. The new building will give them the capacity to add a few hundred additional employees in the future. Then Daikin Applied designs and manufactures technologically advanced commercial HVAC systems for customers around the world. The company continues to add on to its corporate headquarters in Plymouth and increase employment numbers. Wagner Spray Tech, just down the road from here, the company which makes paint sprayers, applicators, and decorating products for the consumers and contractors worldwide, recently completed a remodel in addition to its America's headquarters, adding another 40 uh, employees to its Plymouth location. And then Cantel Medical, they, make, they made a $4.5 million investment in its in corporate headquarters in the building near Highway 169 and Bass Lake Road. The company will move roughly 500 jobs to the headquarters and expects to add another 100 plus jobs over the next three years. Then I'm happy we're welcoming Phillips Healthcare to Plymouth. It recently purchased the 25 acre campus near 59th Avenue and Nathan Lane, just west of 169. Phillips will bring three of its healthcare subsidiaries to its 220,000 square foot facility. Initially, the site will have 200 employees, but plans for many more in the future. Then Energy Management Collaborative, or EMC, the turnkey lighting controls and IoT, Internet of Things, provider moved into a new space in the Vicksburg Business Center. The company, which already had 120 employees, has hired more than 100 additional people. We're pleased that EMC plans to hire even more people in the coming years. Then a new hotel aimed at serving our business community opened up in 2018. The new Homes to Suites Extended Stay Hotel features 102 rooms and ample amenities for business travelers and others. Then Plymouth will also have a new memory care facility opening later on this fall. A partnership with Augustana Care, Parks Place will offer reimagined memory care for individuals and families. Now, this groundbreaking was in January. <laughs> <laughs> like when it got, right when it was getting really cold out. <laughs> I've never seen a groundbreaking in Minnesota in the month of January, so that was unique. Uh, let's take a quick look at some of the retail and restaurants uh, that have opened up in Plymouth this last year. So Cub Foods, as you, uh, if, if you've been in there, has done a significant remodel of its Vicksburg, Vicksburg Lane store. hy V and hy V Liquor are now in Plymouth. A new CVS just recently opened on County Road 6 and 101. And just next to there is Lucky Street, a new restaurant serving Thai French fusion. Uh, just recently opened up last fall, Taco Teresa's began serving street tacos uh, in its new restaurant uh, near 169 and 55. And then Forenza Pizza will open near Lowe's and Michael's off Highway 55. The Buzz Coffee and Cafe opened in February. Looking at residential development, developers continue to meet a high demand for new housing in Northwest Plymouth. In 2018, we saw one of, was one of the top years for single family home building in this past decade. This new residential development is also driving the need for Wyzetta schools to expand, right? Yeah. To meet the growing student population, Wyzetta Public Schools is building a new school, Northwoods Elementary, on the southeast corner of County Road 1 and 57th Avenue. 
Last fall, the district finished in addition to Meadow Ridge Elementary, which opened three years ago. So now let's turn to a few updates on city-related topics, starting with a look at a few park and rec highlights. We officially opened the Northwest Greenway two years ago. It's, ho it's home to more than 350 acres of reserved land with a looping paved trail for walkers, bikers, and more than five and a half miles of the Northwest Greenway are complete and open to the public. It's proven very popular with our residents, so let's take a look at what users have to say about the Greenway. Welcome to the Northwest Greenway, an oasis of wilderness right in the heart of Northwest Plymouth. The city was very thoughtful in, in trying to make sure we acquired land and preserve as much of the natural feel of, of the woods. It's just nice to have the wildlife and the nature right in the heart of the city. We're really seeing a lot of different users, um, anywhere from biking to walking to rollerblading, uh, running. Um, it's very active. You know, you can go on a five mile walk or you can go on a 25 mile walk and I think that's amazing. It connects to a lot of parks as well. So we'll be on a run or walk or bike ride and we'll be able to pull off at a park. There's usually water fountains. And along with connecting places, the trail connects people. I am meeting one of my mom friends here at Aspen Ridge Park. We use the greenway to get here. I put both my kids in the stroller, roll down here. It makes it quick and painless and it's a great workout for me. What can visitors expect for the future of the Northwest Greenway? We've been working on phases of development for the Northwest Greenway and in 2019 one of the phases is building the trailhead which will have more parking and other park amenities which I think then will make it easier for a lot of our residents to get out and access and enjoy, get out, walk and experience nature in the middle of Plymouth. For more information or to map out your path around the Greenway, go to PlymouthMN.gov slash NWGreenway. All right. And people are making good use of the Greenway, and we're already plan making plans now to host a Mayor's 5K run next year to introduce even more people to this great recreational amenity. And then Plymouth Creek Center. It, that'll be in the spotlight this year as we consider possible expansions to that community center. After 20 years, the building is due for maintenance and upgrades anyway. Our population has grown considerably since the Creek Center opened. That growth has created a surge in demand for fitness and recreation program, and the center draws more than 300,000 visitors annually. In 2017, a study confirmed what we were already seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. The Creek Center is just struggling to handle the volume and variety of programs that are offered there. Last year, the city gathered feedback and fe about features people would like to see in a possible community center expansion. People expressed desires for everything from additional gym space to a walking track to an indoor playground, fitness spaces, and STEM classroom. And after considering a range of options, the council has opted to take the next step in fleshing out what an expansion renovation might look like. Once we select an architect and have a schematic design, we will have a better idea of cost and be better positioned to solicit more feedback from the public about specific design features. Because the facility helps meet regional as well as local needs, we are working with our state lawmakers to request $15 million in state bond funding for the Creek Center. Over the last 13 years, 22 facilities with similar regional impact have received almost $236 million of state bonding money. We are also requesting that state lawmakers adopt special legislation giving the city authority to implement a 3% lodging tax. This would allow us to promote and reinvest in our recreation facilities that draw people to Plymouth for tournaments, trainings, and other events. These events generate hotel stays, restaurant visits, and retail shopping. Now let's take a look at public safety and look at a few headlines over the past year. Plymouth Police have a new program to help cut down on vehicle crashes. Reporter Sonia Goins shows us what they're doing to make the roads safer. 
Deputy Chief Eric Fadden is heading up the study. He says there are several key pieces to the safety plan, including teaming up with school bus drivers. Officials are also trying to figure out why many people are not being cautious when they see flashing yellow arrows. New smaller radar speed signs are also on the list. They will be used to check traffic flow and to catch speeders. And crews are busy installing these blue lights on traffic signals on Highway 55. When the light turns red, the blue light glows, making it easier for cops to spot people who run through red lights. Officials want motorists to be more careful and hopefully they can avoid getting one of these. In Plymouth, Sonia Goins is CCX News. The Plymouth Fire Department has some new equipment that will not only help keep firefighters safer, but it will also help the public. Reporter Meredith Hackler shows us why these new tools are vital to the department's mission. The Plymouth Fire Department recently acquired a new rescue boat that they can deploy when saving someone from a water emergency. The boat inflates in 90 seconds and is held in a small bag when not in use. The department also acquired another piece of equipment that is vital to the health of firefighters. The dryer allows firefighters to dry their gear in 45 minutes. Before the dryer, first responders would have to wait up to three days for their equipment to dry. Both new pieces of equipment make the job of firefighters more efficient, in turn keeping the community they serve safer. In Plymouth, Meredith Hackler, CCX News. A new memorial in Plymouth pays tribute to police canine officers. 16-year-old Sam Lieberman teamed up with the Plymouth Police Department to install a four and a half foot tall bronze statue of a German Shepherd. And if you'd like to see the memorial, it is located on the northwest side of the Plymouth Pol Public Safety Building. It's a tool to help officers when responding to calls. The Vitals app provides Plymouth's Police Department with crucial health information that aids their response. It all starts with going online and entering in relevant mental or physical health information. Participants will receive a beacon which stores that data. So if we come within 80 feet of this beacon, uh, it alerts our phone and this provides all the information along with either a, a medical situation or this person has post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, uh, autism, you know, a wide variety of different things. So it gives us that solid information that we've always been missing if we can't communicate with somebody. For more information or to set up a profile, go to thevitalsapp.com. You know, the one thing I will tell you, as having been on the council now for seven years and now as mayor, and having done a lot of door knocking, the one thing, absolutely thing, our residents want is to be safe. They want our, our police and fire departments, that's like, you got to have it. And so, um, I just, hats off, could I just have all our public safety officials and, and people in public safety stand so we can s say thank you to you? We can never say thank you enough. Later this year, the police department will launch a new initiative to improve how it handles mental health crisis calls. The department is partnering with Minnetonka Police to launch a two-year pilot program that will pair the department with a shared county social worker. The program aims to connect individuals who experience a mental health crisis and their families to appropriate resources to prevent future crisis situations. Additionally, Plymouth has about 20 officers certified in crisis intervention response. More officers will be trained later and certified this spring. While the police department is strengthening its ability to respond to mental health related calls, it's also tending to the mental health of police officers. For police officers to give their best to those they serve, they need to be physically and emotionally and mentally healthy. For several years, the department has offered voluntary mental health services to its officers. But over the past year, Plymouth has been requiring officers to meet with mental health practitioners at least once a year. The counselor, who's a retired police officer, is trained to help officers work through trauma uh, that can result from responding to different calls. The annual checkups are designed to establish a relationship between the officer and the practitioner, a proactive approach to make an officer more inclined to seek help in the wake of a traumatic event on the job experience. So now let's look at the fire department. Over the past few years, Plymouth has bolstered public safety staffing levels to keep up with the population growth. 
The 2019 budget furthers that focus with additional staff for the fire department. The department, which relies on a combination of full-time and paid on-call firefighters, is hiring six additional full-time firefighters this year. The department also expects to hire another six by the year 2021. This change will allow the department to staff two fire stations 24-7, while also maintaining our surge staffing needs with paid on-call firefighters. We also expand our department, examine our department facility needs. Two of our three fire stations need significant financial investment over the next few years. One of these stations appear to be nearing the end of its useful lifespan, and the other has significant maintenance needs. The fire department is currently working with an architect to consider remodel, addition, and rebuild options. Then a final note about public safety. Both the police and fire department are now on Twitter. Those interested in viewing public safety tweets and gaining insight into the world of first responders will want to follow both accounts. In addition to public, police and fire, there's another important contingent of the city staff who work to keep our city st safe, our snowplow drivers. They have had plenty of challenges this winter, and here's a short video of some of what they have had to face. 320 miles of roads, 930 cul-de-sacs. Snow-covered plow trucks line the inside of the Plymouth Public Works Department, melting snow on bumpers and blades, remnants from the latest winter blast. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to remove snow from the seventh largest city in Minnesota. A conference room is turned into a makeshift bedroom for crews who either worked too long or didn't want to miss their shift. Clearing the streets of snow was challenging this time around because crews couldn't pre-treat the roads ahead of time. When it gets this cold, the salt does doesn't activate at these temperatures. We do have treated salt that we that we use when the temperatures get colder. Um, when it gets as cold as it's going to in the next couple of days, you know, even our treated salt does not activate. So for now, plow drivers are racing against Mother Nature, doing what they can before the Arctic blast arrives. We really want to make sure that we mechanically clear the roads, scrape the roads as much as we can before this uh, cold snap hits. So we're going to stay on it over the course of the next couple of days with the majority of our staff to make sure that, that we don't have any ice being created by, by the packing of the snow on the roadways. In Plymouth, Sonia Goins, CCX News. The polar vortex was just one of the challenges Public Works crew. That came in in January and has been cold and snowing ever since until the last couple days. February was one of the snowiest months on record and created snow storage issues, which I'm sure a lot of you are experiencing uh, that's in the, the, the cities right away. Uh, our snowplow drivers truly are our unsung sung heroes this winter. I want to recognize our streets and utility managers, Joe Palman, our street supervisor, Troy Keith, and Public Works Director, Michael Thompson, for leading this effort. So if you're in the Public Works, could you stand so we can say thank you to you today? And Michael Thompson is being humble and sitting in the back there, who is our public works director. So uh, they have just worked uh, endlessly this winter. I want to express our gratitude for each and every snow plower, snow plow driver this winter. Crews have responded to 14 different snow citywide call out events this year. Six of those were on weekends, and one was actually on New Year's Day. We had city crews out there plowing. And finally, I also want to thank all of you and all of our residents for your patience. Like 99.9% .9 of what we get is just saying thank you for all the snow plowing that's been out there and just really being patient as we've gone through this, this tremendous winter. Um, so now let's take a look, at, since we're talking about roads, some up upcoming road construction projects. This construction season, the, the city, Hennepin County, and the state will replace the County Road 9 bridge, the Rockford Road Bridge over Interstate 494. The project is set to begin in May and wrap up in November, weather permitting. The bridge will be closed to traffic for about four months this summer and fall. While the project will cause significant traffic headaches, it will pay off with improved safety and reduced congestion for years to come. So does peop do people remember all the congestion on 494 those two years when they were working on that? Now it's like a distant memory and it's great to have three lanes in each direction. That'll be the same once we get Rockford Road Bridge done. <laughs> Plymouth residents and motorists have shared a variety of pedestrian and traffic safety concerns on County Road 47. The City of Plymouth is taking a proactive approach in partnering with Hennepin County to study the entire corridor. 
After gathering public feedback, conducting a traffic study, and preparing a corridor layout, the final report and action plan is set to be complete late this summer or early fall. And then this April, MnDOT will begin an improvement project to County Road 101 bridge over Highway 12. And while this project is not in Plymouth, it will significantly impact the traffic coming and going out of our city. The bridge will be closed from early July through October. And driving isn't the only way, though, to get around our city. Our city-operated Plymouth our bus system, Plymouth Metrolink, continues to serve people living and working in Plymouth. Last year, Metrolink provided more than half a million rides. We've recently replaced 18 buses in our fleet. All new buses look a little bit different as they sport updated Metrolink branding. Five of the replacement buses are the larger coach buses, a first for Metrolink. And I, I think back to this in 2009 when I first got on our transit committee. Um, and in 2010 when I became chair, I visited with staff and I said one of the goals I would really like our Metrolink is to have bus coach buses. Because you come, when you're downtown, you see all the Southwest and MVTA buses and all these coach buses go by. And then the Plymouth buses, uh, which just weren't quite as nice. And so it, I said, I didn't want to come off transit until uh, we got those coach buses. Well, it took a little bit, little bit longer than I wanted. But 10 years later, we have coach buses that are part of our fleet. And they're definitely worth the wait. Riders appreciate the added features on the new buses, such as overhead reading lights and more storage space on these buses. As we make improvements to our fleet, transit staff is always happy to partner with businesses to explore options to better serve employment centers. Plymouth Dial Ride has also seen some changes over the past year. Since last fall, Metrolink shuttle users have had a new way to catch Dial Ride with a microtransit app. And this is something you're going to be seeing a lot more in the future is this whole microtransit concept. With the app, riders can book and pay for shuttles as needed. They don't no, no longer need to plan rides days or weeks in advance. And here's a short clip from an interview I did with Transloc that highlights the benefits of this change. We're always looking to see how we can be more efficient with our tax dollars. How can we make them go further? How can we leverage technology to get a better solution for everybody? We came and found Transloc. And that was really seemed to be the intuitive solution that we needed to move forward with our dial ride service. Being able to understand where people need to get to and where they're starting from and connect all the dots. Before we're picking up one or two people, and now we can pick up six or eight people, think how much more service we can put out on the road to provide that. I really believe that this is kind of the beginning of the future of transit. And as this continues to develop, you know, I liken this to being Uber for the transit community. And so as this continues to develop and, and get uh, implemented out in the market, I think you'll see more and more the ability to like, I want to go from here to there and be able to easily make those connections. Now before I wrap up, I want to make, mention uh, to the contributions made by our city volunteers. As I had mentioned, we were recently recognized with our award for our volunteer program. Both individuals and businesses volunteer through the city program. Our volunteer coordinator, Jackie Moss, regularly works with companies that want to give back to the community. Last year, employees from 11 different companies volunteered with the city. And overall, in 2018, about 1,600 volunteers contributed almost 27,000 hours to the city. This is an amazing effort. Their contributions speak volumes about their connection to the community. Also, if we measure the value to the city, it adds up to an in-kind contribution of more than $660,000. We cannot thank them enough for all they do, share and do for us. Now I want to share a little bit about how Plymouth compares to its peer cities, as well as share some finance related information. As a provider of public infrastructure like streets, trails, parks, water and sewer, as well as services such as police and fire, street maintenance and snow plowing, the city strives to provide a good value for both, to both businesses and our residents. The city receives 10 cents. Look at that, just 10 cents of every property tax dollar business pays goes to Plymouth. The remainder goes to the state, fiscal disparities, which is almost a third, and our, the school districts in the county. On our residential property tax dollar, 
Plymouth only collects 21 cents of every residential tax dollar. The rest goes to Hennepin County, the schools, and other jurisdictions like the watershed districts. When comparing, we compare favorably to other Hennepin County cities, and this compares to cities with populations of 45,000 or more when looking at taxes on a $5 million business. The property that's valued at $5 million, you can see Plymouth is at the very bottom of, of the tax on that uh, commercial building. We also compare well when it comes to residential property taxes. Again, this chart shows how we stack up against other cities. My goal is to keep Plymouth below Edina. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell that to Mayor Hovland. Uh, this, the next chart shows how Plymouth's tax rate compares to other Hennepin County cities with populations more than 45,000. As you can see, Plymouth has the lowest tax rate. While we work hard to keep our tax rate low, it's not our sole focus. And I said this time and time again when campaigning last year, it's about maintaining our quality of life in Plymouth, reinvesting in our infrastructure, our parks and trail systems. People expect us to have good roads and to drive on good roads. That's all the balance we need to keep while being responsible on how we fiscally manage the, the, the city. The next graph shows our tax rate history. You can see Plymouth and Edina have consistently been the lowest. That's why I always give Mayor Hovland a hard time from, from Edina. The Plymouth has been the lowest since 2017. The City of Plymouth does 10-year financial forecasting to ensure that we focus on the long view when it comes to our financial health and not just focus on a single year. And finally, the City of Plymouth holds the highest possible bond rating from two rating agencies, Moody's Investor Service and Standard & Poor's. And Plymouth is just one of a handful of cities to hold this distinction. Um, during the Great Recession, back in 2008, 2009, I know Plymouth was one of only six or seven cities in the whole state that maintained those AAA bond ratings. So I think that's just a testament to not only the city council as it's come through then, but the city council that has come before and how strong and well financially managed this, this city has been for a long, long time. And as I wrap up, a running analogy seems in order. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Uh, that was the day it was 15 below outside and not much wind and, and the, the breath didn't go anywhere but kind of freeze on your face. As a distance runner, I'm motivated by mapping out my training. And I like to sign up for marathons because it keeps me disciplined on a disciplined training schedule. Staying focused, if that's not discipline, I don't know what is. Uh, staying focused day to day, I'm able to achieve long-term goals. Well, the city of Plymouth is no different. City leaders think about our work with long-term milestones in mind. Let me bring you along on one of my runs to show you the city's route this year, this, co this coming year. One is preserving our natural resources for generations to come up in the Northwest Greenway, where the mayor's run will be next year, right, Diane? <laughs> and Barb? Planning for recreation facility needs. Reimagining important areas of commerce and community life at the city center. Keeping people, goods, and services moving on area roadways and bolstering public safety as the city grows. As the year progresses, we look ahead to next year. We will continue to chart Plymouth's course with long-term health and strength of our community in mind. Thank you. Now we have a few minutes left. If there are any questions? Is there a quick, easy answer why the Rockford Road Bridge wasn't rebuilt when the kind of 94 was The question was, why wasn't the Rockford Road, the kind of Road 9 bridge, rebuilt when they redid 494? I know we advocated strongly for that at that time. We wanted it done at that time. It would have made much more sense to do it <coughs> at the same time you're doing the 494 is take care of that bridge. Uh, but MnDOT in the we MnDOT in the county and that whole thing could never come together. That's not a city bridge. We don't have jurisdiction or control over it. That was uh, something that MnDOT in the Hennepin County and it just it just never came together when that. We were just happy to get 494 done at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? The pie chart. What does fiscal disparities mean? Fiscal disparities. Um, that means that it try. Fiscal, the question is, what is fiscal disparities? Fiscal disparities is 
Uh, in the Twin Cities area, they try to level the playing field with cities that don't have commercial properties. And so it's kind of like local government aid, where they give local government aid to cities to help um, Sub, what I would say subsidize some of their, their financial issues in terms of being able to fund things, well, it works the same way. If they, we have such a strong commercial tax base, but other cities don't. So it takes that tax and kind of redistributes it to other cities that don't have that commercial tax base. Other questions, Bill. Mayor, thank you. And I should say, being on the Transportation Advisory Board with mm -hmm. you, I always enjoy those discussions of you and Mayor Hovland about tax rates. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's about on the leading end. <laughs> um, as we think about Plymouth and the growth you're describing, uh, certainly looking at transit and highway needs, road needs, uh, movement of people and goods. Um, you know, any thoughts as to where do we go continuing improvement? Certainly, the three lanes each way on, three, on 494 have been major, the bridge major, uh, certainly what's going on with Plymouth Link uh, major, but uh, as we look out there further, you know, what can we do so we, connectivity-wise, with the rest of the metropolitan area help our community here? Yeah, so I don't know if I can really condense that question a lot, but it had more with, with transportation and connectivity. Um, I just think we're at the cusp of really seeing how that whole thing works together. As I mentioned, you know, we have that technology of Transloc uh, that we're going to be utilizing, you know, as we work with other technologies. So, for instance, you know, Southwest um, Transit is looking at using it, Met and VTA is looking at using that technology. Uh, as we look and, and roll out technology like that for it to be able to talk together and say, I need to get to uh, from Plymouth to United Healthcare down in, in um, Eden Prairie or Minnetonka, can't remember which. Um, but you, we should be able to make that connection so that we have either a bus service or something. So I think as you see that, more and more you're gonna see that technology being coming forward as a solution to those transportation needs that are out there. Thank you. Yeah. Paul Mark from East Medicine Lake Boulevard. Yeah. Uh, there was no uh, indication at all in your overheads about Medicine Lake, the jewel of the city mm -hmm. of Plymouth. Uh, as you know, we have uh, invasive species going on there. There's been a cooperation between the Hennepin County Parks and the Three Rivers Park System and the city of Plymouth, but there, is, there still is an issue for us to control the invasive species. Are you considering anything coming on this next year to help that erosion? Because you have two parks there, and so does mm -hmm. the city, city of Anne County. And, and there's a lot of residents that use that, but it isn't the residents. It's the residents of the mm -hmm. city of Plymouth that use the Medicine Lake. It isn't just people that live on the lake. So I'd like to know more about what your plan is to put in that into place for to, to eliminate these ongoing problems with uh, invasive species. Yeah, I, I don't know how much Plymouth can do to eliminate those invasive yeah. species. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh, but I know it's been a high priority for Plymouth in the past, and we've had other, you know discussions and study sessions to talk about uh, Medicine Lake. And I correct, I agree with you. It is a jewel. It's you know next to Lake Minnetonka. It's one of the largest lakes in the area, uh, and we want to do everything we can to try and make, maintain that. Once those invasive species come in. And it's like, how do you minimize the impact to the lake that you have on that? So uh, it's just not the city. I think it's important that we partner across with the DNR and all the other bodies to try and address the problem. And I think it's something that we need to keep as a high priority that we need to continue to look at. Um, because you're right, it's not, and it's not just Plymouth residents. It's residents from all over. It's a regional asset for our city. Uh, and so we just have to work and make sure we're addressing those. So yes, we didn't have it in the presentation, but Medicine Lake, that can, it will be a priority for us to address. Any other easy questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is really easy. Okay. In the beginning, you showed a slide with a mm -hmm. bar graph, and Plymouth mm -hmm. was fourth. And you said it was larger than even Duluth mm -hmm. or Rochester. Yeah. What was, I forgot what that was. That was based on business sales or GDP. So you measure by GDP generated, okay. and it's just a testament to all the business that we have in the Plymouth area, that if you add up all those sales, how much GDP or, or business sales that generates. So it makes us the fourth largest. Yeah, people don't know, we're bigger than St. Cloud, we're bigger than Duluth, we're bigger than Rochester. 
in terms of business production. Well, if there's no other questions, thank you so much for coming. This is my first State of the City address, and I appreciate everyone coming out and do it for this. Thank you. <laughs>